is it live streaming? <laughs> start Hello, hello.
हेलो Welcome to day 2 Pycon India 2014. Our first speaker for today is Raghav who is going to speak on introduction to bin pi. Raghav is an undergraduate computer student from Bits Pilani and he is one of the maintainer of bin pi. Actually from Anand University Chennai. Okay, whatever. Uh hi, I'm Raghav. Uh I'm from Chennai. I'm going to talk about bin pi. So uh bin pi is basically a digital electronic simulation library. I started by uh, Bitspilani Goa campus students, and it started a few months ago. And uh, there is an it's mainly aimed towards students, okay? So uh, like-minded students who can uh, who know Python already and uh, can try out some simulations out there. So again, there is a link at the bottom of the slide, which points to a GitHub repo which contains the uh, IPython notebook and the presentation. If you get too bored, go check it out. Okay. So uh, what to expect from this talk? Uh, well, uh, we'll see a little bit about digital electronics and uh, see how we can implement those stuff using BinPy. <coughs> uh, we've got modules for gates, flip-flops, registers, stuff like that, and we'll play around with some ICs. And we have got an excuse me, we've got an uh, ASCII-based oscilloscope out there, so you can uh, kind of run simulations. And uh, there there are some algorithms for multiplication, coin McCluskey methods, alga, I mean, uh, minimize the logic minimum. that hello yeah. yeah so uh, analog is kind of experimental right now so uh, we don't actually have uh, much analog libraries or uh, functionality built into binpy 
but we do have a few uh, say buffers, converters and uh, a signal generator which can generate sine square ramp and all. At the end if time permits you uh, an amplitude modulated uh, signal using two uh, signal generator blocks ok. We use uh, two signal generator modules of signal ok. So uh, what I uh, really kindly expect from BinPi is that it is not P spacer or CAT ok. Uh, there are lots and lots of tools which can do kind of uh, accurate analog simulations, BinPi is not one of those and uh, we are kind of trying to be an Python equivalent of Verilog something like that and we are inspired like I said uh, like it is uh, put up here, we are inspired by two great libraries MyHDL and PyEDE, uh, those who know about MyHDL okay, pretty much 4, 5, great. <laughs> and PyEDE is a great math library, I mean boolean math library, it has got SAT solvers and uh, some uh, stuff like espresso heuristic logic minimizer which uh, espresso heuristic logic minimizer is a great minimization algorithm by Berkeley University I guess. So again uh, a few more things you uh, I request you not to expect from this talk is a delay model kind of a work in progress right now ok. And since everything is kind of run in a concurrent fashion like we do it in Verilog, those who know about Verilog great. So, uh, uh, Concurrency in Verilog is kind of simulated using multi-threading in Python, okay. So there will be a, a few timing related bugs. The reason we will have a few timing related bugs is that, uh, you know, uh, when there are different threads, the priority will be given to a uh, graphic simulator and, uh, simulation thread and all that. Okay, let us get started and uh, easiest way to install BinPy would be to clone it from the GitHub repository and uh, just use Python setup tools to just install it, okay. Great. And uh, we will move on to gates. The basic fundamental block of BinPy is gates and gates uh, gates are basically like classes. You can instantiate from them just like we do it in Verilog and uh, the, uh, these are the uh, you know tooth table, the Venn diagrams, Venn diagrams those who are familiar with set theory must be knowing about it and uh, ok. Ok, let me uh, talk a little bit about XOR gate. XOR function is a uh, really interesting function, it is also known as exclusive disjunction operation. Uh, the uh, real importance of XOR is that uh, when you give a uh, uniformly distributed sequence, two uniformly distributed sequence, one as the input for A and another as the input for B, you get an output of uniformly distributed sequence. The uniformly distributed sequence means that in a random sequence the probability of getting 1 or uh, the probability of getting 0 is equal. So uh, the basic advantage of that is that uh, in cryptographic systems when I do message XOR with K, uh, this is a uh, key, you get this uh, cipher text, right? The cipher text cannot be analyzed using frequency analysis methods to break it down. See for example, if we use AND gate to do the same thing, uh, we, uh, the output will be kind of skewed towards 0, ok. We know that the probability of uh, that will be 0 0.75, the probability of getting 1 as the output of the AND gate will be 0 0.25. XOR is special in that case that probability of getting 1 and five, uh, I mean 0 is same. So, it is uh, equivalent to modulo 2 addition. Uh, well, ok, I uh, will show you the demo of that, but uh, before that we will uh, uh, look at three more slides, ok, connectors, uh, buses and linker module. These are basically like the connection architecture of BinPy. So connectors are uh, very similar to uh, what we use in Verilog, in out, register, input, output, stuff like that and they can be used to connect to digital structures, gates, you know, stuff uh, like that and again b a bus is a really versatile class, it is a really useful uh, object which you can uh, get from BinPy, it is a multi bit vector module, ok. We can create a multi uh, port analog or a multi bit digital, uh, we can store multi bit digital or a multi port analog value inside it and it is an abstraction over list. So basically you kind of get to uh, do all uh, list operations like slicing, uh, rotation, circular rotation and stuff like that and again uh, you can do batch updation, batch updation by uh, that I mean you can just set all the logic, I will show you in a demo it will be more clear but uh, just for uh, take my word for it. You can do batch updation, set logic all, uh, get logic all and stuff like that. Uh, then you have uh, the linker module. So uh, the connector module like I said it connects two uh, digital blocks. So basically you have a digital block outputting a value and internally it stores the list of all connections towards it or away from it and again it propagates those uh, changes in values to the next digital block uh, using a trigger mechanism. The uh, disadvantage of that is that when you have a feedback loop like we have in uh, JK flip flop, JK flip flop is built around SR flip flop with a feedback loop right. So if you have uh, those kind of circuits you will have an infinite uh, triggering thing, it will uh, it, this will trigger this, this will trigger this, it will go on. 
So to avoid that, we kind of uh, designed a linker module. The linker module is basically a graph representation of all the uh, circuit links. This kind of runs in the background as a daemon thread and uh, kind of uh, propagates all the changes in the nodes to other uh, nodes. It's basically about it. I'll show you the demo of these three till now. So you just import everything. And this is how an uh, gate is simulated in WinPy. Okay, uh, you can uh, give n number of inputs to it. Again, you can use a connected, you can use a just like it's very similar to Verilog, you, get, you instantiate a gate, right? Then you uh, give some inputs and you get the output. Just that in Verilog, we gave it uh, output followed by the inputs. Here, we just used an output method, okay? This is just uh, the basic stuff. Then you can use the connector, like I said. The advantage of using a connector is, see, I just uh, set the logic over here. Set the logic of one, I mean, uh, change the logic of one of the inputs and that propagates back to the output. That's uh, pretty basic stuff. And this is about bus. I just create a four connector, four connector bus. I create four connector instances and use it to instantiate a bus. And I can do uh, stuff like, uh, as you can see here, I can do stuff like get logic all, which returns me the Boolean uh, representation of all the contents of the string. 0, 1, uh, 0, 0. This is basically what these connectors hold inside it. And uh, WinPy has an inbuilt digital to, I mean, it kind of maintains the 5V, 0V logic. So one represents a high uh, logic high, which is 5 volts, and 0 represents a gaunt of 0 volts. You can configure it to uh, point to some plus 32 or minus 32, uh, like we use it in serial uh, module, right? Serial communication stuff like that. So if you want that kind of thing, you can do it in binpy.config file. So again, uh, these are basic uh, copy concerns. And, th th and this is an uh, interesting feature of binpy. I mean bus uh, module, you can concatenate two buses. Say you have two four port devices, output of two four port devices having, uh, you can concatenate those two to give another eight port bus. We can then uh, copy from that bus, all that, okay, that's pretty basic stuff. And one more thing is that you can iterate through a bus. You can iterate through a bus just like you can do it in a list. The advantage of iterating through a bus is that when you iterate through a bus, you can uh, just change those uh, values of connectors or perhaps you can update the uh, label of connectors or you can even uh, do kind of uh, you know get the logic of connectors individually if it is an analog bus you can get the voltage and stuff like that these are basic how the connection architecture of binpy works i'll uh, move on to real simulation i mean uh, ic simulation stuff like that later on so for now you can basically and this index is an internal uh, detail this kind of stores an index for each and every connector so each and every connector has a, uh, maintains an index so that we can uh, track it when there is a bug, we can know which connector connects to which uh, digital structure and all that. Again, I use list comprehension to just, uh, you know, join the previously set uh, label into a neat thing like this, B son, B, uh, this is a bus, okay, fine. You can also create one analog bus, this is uh, pretty standard stuff, and you can slice through buses. Bus D is an 8 port bus, and I have just sliced through the bus just like I do in a uh, uh, list slicing. Again, I'm just uh, using equality comparison to just whether, uh, verify whether the uh, logic of bus E and bus B are same. You can do uh, circular rotation in buses. Circular rotation as in, look at this. You can do this with buses uh, using the uh, left shift and right shift operators. Okay, about the linker module that I told, it will run as a daemon, right? So now, uh, assume this diagram is actually drawn with KKR. So it actually contains a bug. Uh, assume this is connected to this, okay, assume this is connected to this. So basically we have a, a power supply rail, which is VCC and ground. Again, have a control volt, which is again a four port analog device and slave one, which is a four port analog device. Slave zero is another flow, a four port analog device. Control voltage basically uh, drives slave one and slave zero. So assume this is zero, one, two, three, uh, it's one, two, three, four, I just took it off some IC. So assume it is one, zero, one, two, three, and the tr uh, higher uh, two ports of the control V is connected to slave uh, zero or one, and uh, lower two ports of the uh, control V is connected to the another uh, slave device. So I basically create a bus for control voltage. How do you do that in Binpice? You uh, basically create a bus for that. You set the logic of all the uh, voltages, and you create two slave ports. And again, I, uh, I, uh, like I said, bus can be used to both, uh, you know, contain analog as well as digital values. So again, I use these two slave ports to uh, as analog devices, four port bus. And again, I just specify the links that I mentioned below. That's all I'm doing right here. I just specify those links that have to be connected between the buses, control voltages and stuff like that. And again, uh, when I do this, as you can see, uh, which can, I can do this. 
I'll get this. Okay, this internally uh, updates all the propagates the uh, voltage changes in a node to all the linked nodes nearby. It maintains uh, these links in a graph data structure. The graph data structure used is a network x graph. Uh, how many of you know about network x? Yeah, network x is a great graphing library and uh, you could use it for uh, any kind of traversals and stuff like that. So, we use internally network x graph to maintain the links. Okay, so when I uh, make a change in the control voltage, see I am not doing anything else, I am just making a change in the control voltage, you should be seeing an updation in the slave 0. Can you see this? 5, 6, it got changed here, right? Before it was this, it got changed to 5, 6. That is basically about the linker module. You can also unlink, I am just unlinking slave 0, uh, slave 0's middle two ports uh, from the uh, graph, so that uh, any updation to the control voltage does not propagate to the slave 0 port. If I do that, any change in the control voltage is not propagated to slave 0, it remains at 5, 0, though the uh, input has changed to 3 and 2, but the slave 1 gets uh, the update from that. Okay, that is pretty much about the linker module. Again, uh, the VCC propagates because VCC is still connected. Okay. <coughs> and about, okay, no a digital logic simulation, sorry, no digital logic simulation library will be complete without uh, a module to handle bit level manipulation, right? You might have to uh, set a flag of few registers, you might have to uh, do some uh, bit level manipulation for uh, say uh, implementing an algorithm, whatever. So, we got this bit string, excellent bit string library, which basically uh, handles efficient conversions between integers, hex, stuff like that. And we use this bit string library and uh, bit string dot bit array, uh, that is a class. We uh, wrap this class around some custom, we have some a few custom definitions. Uh, for example, we have a parameter known as signed. I will explain you why we need that parameter. So, we use that and uh, we have made this binpy bits module, which can uh, do bit level manipulations and we can, uh, which can convert between uh, different hex, binary, uint, int and all. Okay, so I will just show you that. Okay, just initiate it with an integer value of 5. And uh, the reason why I need a signed parameter in this binpy bits module is that, when I uh, store 5 as binary, Python stores is at uh, 101, bin of 5 is 101. When I do a bin of minus 5, Python yields, uh, I will show you, I mean you know that right, minus 101. So, that is not how digital logic works. Digital logic, uh, you have a sign bit at the front, that is how you have a, you maintain it as a 2's complement value. So, see this, you just say uh, initially by default it is, uh, it, it, it will be uh, referred to as uh, not signed. And again, when I do uint, it uh, bit string library has a functionality of converting to, like I said, to uint hex and all. When I do it to uint, I get 5. When I do it to a binary, this is 101. However, when I do it to an int, you get minus 3. So, uh, there is an ambiguity whether that uh, binary 101 represents minus 3 or 5. So, to just disambiguate that, I just uh, store a parameter known as signed and I explicitly mention that uh, it is not a signed value. So, you could do this, you get 5. So, if it is signed, you get 5, otherwise you get minus 3. Uh, the reason why this is uh, done is that binary value, the prepending zeros in a binary value are being stripped off. So, when you do that, you, uh, you are left off with 101. So, that 1 can be uh, represented as just an uh, sign bit or, or like uh, any other regular bit. Okay, this is basic uh, stuff like I am just converting it to hex 1111 as signed. Okay, when it is signed, it represents minus 1. Refer the documentation of BitString. BitString is a really great library. You can uh, refer the log, uh, documentation of the BitString to uh, discover some additional functionality that you could use it here also. Okay, this is pretty basic stuff. And okay, I will just talk about multiplication. We got a very old module that was designed at the start of BinPy, the operations module. The operations module basically handles uh, binary operations like addition, subtraction, basic stuff, multiplication that we can do it uh, using BinPy. The only thing that it uh, native Python cannot do, uh, not without any additional uh, two or three lines is that complementing, two's complement. Otherwise, it has everything, uh, what Python and basic stuff. Okay, so when we do a binary multiplication, uh, this is a binary multiplication. Now, when you uh, give this binary multiplication to a student who has just learnt multiplication, he will kind of uh, do it this way, 1 into 1, 1 into 0, 1 into 1, 1 into 1. So, the comp time complexity of this one is order of n square because there are n into n multiplications totally. Uh, this is a really complex one and this is known as grade school multiplication. When you give this to a uh, little bit higher grade student, say fifth, uh, fifth class or sixth class, he intuitively reduces this to 1101 into 1 is going to be 1, uh, the same number. 
and if it is going to be multiplied by 0, it is going to be just shifted. I, don't, I need not add anything. The partial product can be just uh, two shifts. So, uh, that is exactly the algorithm used in Robertson's multiplication. Uh, Robertson's multiplication is used at a registry level and uh, is a really famous algorithm. A slight improvement upon it is Booth's algorithm. Robertson's multiplication basically does uh, the, uh, the same thing that I told you before. Using a series of shift and add methods, it basically keeps a product register. In the product register, it initializes it to 0. And when it has initialized it to 0, then uh, based on the uh, every single bit of the multiplier, it then basically adds or shifts it, basic basic stuff like uh, just that we do it intuitively here. Booth's multiplication is slightly interesting algorithm. The advantage of Booth's multiplication is that, uh, see this one, see when you multiply 5 into 777, uh, you do not do it that way, right? We, uh, we uh, Our brain intuitively reduces it to 8000 minus 1 into 5. So, that is exactly how Booth's multiplication algorithm works. And uh, uh, how it does is that it, uh, you know, um, series of 1s or 0, a block of 1s or 0s, it takes in a block of 1s or 0s, it, uh, it, ex it actually examines adjacent pairs of 1s or 0s and based on the values of those 1s and 0s, it then uh, does either add then subtract, there is a flow chart here to explain that. It uh, does either add then uh, shift or subtract then shift or simply shift based on the adjacent bit. There is a, uh, there is a thing with Booth's algorithm, the worst case complexity will be same as Robertson's multiplication because the worst case complexity will be 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0 alternating bits. There won't be any kind of something like you are multiplying 7, 6, 7, 6, 7, 6. There is no way to simplify that. If it is 7, 7, 7, you could do 8000 minus 1. But it is, uh, if it is 7, 6, 7, 6, you could literally do nothing or if you have some fancy stuff, that is okay. But okay. Uh, now, we will move on to Karatsuba's fast multiplication algorithm. Karatsuba's uh, multiplication algorithms are uh, high level algorithms used at the uh, compiler level abstraction. So, Karatsuba's multiplication algorithm works by breaking uh, two n bit numbers. Uh, the x and y, let me explain it to you in terms of equation itself. Okay. So, uh, consider x, the higher order bits, higher order bits, the lower order bits. You represent x as a, uh, a half n shifted, I mean n by 2 shifted higher order bits and the lower order bits. Okay. When you do x star y, it is equivalent to multiplying the RHS of these equations. right? So, when you do that, when you do that, you expand it to get this. When I am going to multiply this, or I am going to multiply this, there is no improvement in the time efficiency, right? There is no uh, improvement in the time efficiency, there is no uh, benefit, anything like that. But the basic uh, optimization done in Karatsuba's algorithm is that, I expand this one to again this. When I do this, you can uh, pretty uh, easily see that, you get these terms. These terms out here are already pre-computed. That is the micro optimization done in Karatsuba's multiplication algorithm, which reduces the time complexity uh, of say any other algorithm. Karatsuba's multiplication algorithm is really important uh, for the fact that uh, it is used under the hood of Python for multiplying really, really no large numbers. There are few other algorithms like Toom K, uh, K being commonly 3 and SSA algorithms. Well, we will not deal with that. That is uh, just a little bit more micro optimization done over Karatsuba's method. Toom K uh, breaks the uh, n bit number into k uh, k sized bits and multiplies and does micro optimizations like this. Okay, again, I'll show you those uh, algorithms that we have in BinPy for that. So normally, you can just uh, we have two utility functions, two unsigned int and two signed int. Based on uh, what you need, you can just convert it to uh, one 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 minus one. Basic stuff. We have Booth's algorithm. Okay, now you should be asking me a question. Why do we need this? Uh, because if I am going to implement this in Python, uh, this will be adding a lot of overheads, right? Every step will have an overhead. Uh, if I do a recursion, recursion is again inefficient in Python. I mean, like when it is converted to uh, compiled to C, it is again uh, not going to be very efficiently done compared to if I am going to do it directly in C Python. So, uh, why basically these kind of algorithms are included in BinPy is that you can go to the source code. Source code is very much well commented. So, you can go to the source code, see how it is implemented. When you are uh, taking up a digital course, it will be uh, very much uh, helpful for you to kind of learn these algorithms using the source code because you already know Python, assuming that you already know Python. You need not learn uh, much harder language Verilog. Okay, those who know Verilog, sorry. Uh, Verilog is uh, kind of really hard to begin with. Starting, it's really hard. Uh, there are some uh, concurrent loops, uh, blocking operations, non-blocking, stuff like that. You get really confused at the beginning. So, you can just jump into the source code, you can check it out. Okay, and uh, BinPy has some ICs simulations, excuse me, okay. ICs and simulations. 
Okay, we have some uh, 7400 ICs, series ICs and 4000 series ICs. Uh, so, like I said, there is no GUI, but you can do it in console. Uh, you can just uh, uh, set the pins to the digital values and get the output, simulated output of that. So, uh, creating an IC is as simple as just instantiating a class. You need not write further code. You can see the doc string of it. Doc strings are, what happens here? Oh, sorry. Okay, the doc string is well, uh, well made and it, uh, it contains what each pin represents, what each pin, uh, what each bit must be given to pin, stuff like that. So uh, it even has a small documentation on how to use it. Okay, I uh, there is a small uh, draw IC function which kind of uses ASCII box drawing characters uh, to kind of draw this IC along with the pin configuration and stuff like that. Okay, this one works like this. Again, you can see the Z here. Z corresponds to the output. This is a two-bit NAND gate. You have uh, zero, zero. There is no output because I have not simulated anything on it. Again, I set I use uh, I set the pin configuration uh, using a dictionary. The key values of the dictionary uh, correspond to the uh, pin numbers, and the values correspond to the digital logic that will be asserted on those pins. Okay, I do that and I set the IC, and the, then I just run the IC. The uh, and you get the output. Uh, I'm not just go going over through every single method of pin pi. Okay, you can just uh, go through the examples and documentation. I'll just go through that. So again, when you uh, draw the IC again, you see that the simulation has been performed. So 1 and 0, NAND of 1 and 0 is 1. Okay. Uh, certain ICs have a pin tag over here. You can kind of get what exactly this pin represents over here. Right now, all these ICs don't have. So how many of you know about IC 74181? Okay, it's a really cool IC. Uh, it's known as an uh, arithmetic logic unit IC. It was pretty famous IC before the introduction of microcontrollers and uh, microprocessors. Because it efficiently uh, does four bit, it effici efficiently does four bit uh, uh, operations based on these four select lines. So four select lines gives you around uh, sixteen, right? Sixteen operations. Those functions will be around here. I took this on Google Images. Is it clear? Yeah. Okay. Kind of. Okay. So uh, for every single configuration of select line, you have a different function performed over the four bit inputs A and B. So we'll just see how we can do that. It's pretty simple. Just Again, create an instance of the ALU. S draw the ALU, it will be a pretty long one. Don't fit the screen, does it fit? No. Okay. Again, I just set A bus and B bus as the inputs, four inputs, and uh, I connect the power uh, rails. Then I do the uh, A dot set logic 1000, B I set it to 0001. And select line, I uh, give it as a reversed form because uh, list, you know that, right? A list uh, starts from zero. So this would be uh, 0 here, 0, 1, 2, but I want this to be the uh, third bit, I mean 0, 1, 2, third bit. So I just reverse it and give, and I set the IC, I run it, okay, let's just uh, check the output, okay. So the output is F0, F1, F2, F3, which is 9, 10, 11, and 13. 9, 10, okay, what happened? Oh, sorry, this is the first diagram, yeah. Nine. 10, 11, and 13. This gives you 1001. 1001 is basically uh, or bitwise or of A, which is 1000 and 0001. So how do I select that or using the select lines like it's given here? Where is it? Google Images thing. Okay. One scan. Okay. Can you see it? 1110. Select line given as 1110 corresponds to an bitwise or. Uh, it's not clear there, but take my word for it. Okay, that's how we do IC simulations. There are pretty much uh, a lot of ICs like uh, carry look ahead adder and stuff like that. Carry look ahead adder, you must have come across. It's an efficient way to uh, do that. Yeah, then we have this uh, multiplexer and demultiplexer. I mean, uh, these are sequentials. Uh, digital structures in BinPy, we have three. Okay, basically combinational circuits, sequential circuits, and tools like multi vibrators and oscilloscope. I'll show you an ASCII based oscilloscope. Okay, uh, first we'll deal with multi, uh, demultiplexer, pretty basic stuff. You have this block, you simulate it, full adder, that's pretty much the same. Uh, needs no explanation, right? So, multiplexers, same like that. And again, uh, I simulate sequential circuits. Sequential circuits, you know about JK flip-flop, right? JK flip-flop, based on the inputs J and K, for every uh, negative clock uh, thing, uh, every negative edge of the clock, it produces the output based on the uh, J and K. So, if J and K is 0, 0, no changes in the uh, output. 0, 1, which means a reset operation, 1, 0, which means a set operation, and again, 1, 1 is toggle. Okay, let's just use the ASCII oscilloscope of BenPy 
use the clock module to uh, connect a clock to the JK flip flop. This is basically giving one pulse and again I am iterating through all the val uh, possible uh, values for J and K. For every J and K I mean in uh, 0, 0, 0, 1 or 1, 0 like that. Okay, if I do this. Okay, what is the wrong? I think the width should be set to. Okay, it's not displaying perfectly. It's supposed to display clearly. Wait a second. Where did it go wrong? Slow scope start to before start. Okay, it's supposed to display correctly. I'll show you an uh, output over here. Okay, where is that? As the ASCII oscilloscope works something like this, okay, screwed up everywhere. Okay, anyway, I will show you this later on. <coughs> Leave this for now. Okay, we have this counters, uh, sequential circuit, uh, counters are an important part of the sequential circuits, right? N bit down counter, this actually uh, prints well in the console. The IPython screen is actually small, so I am not able to correctly uh, do that. However, I will show you the counters, they are, uh, the oscilloscope should look fine. Okay, check this out and we have, uh, uh, these are some imports and I basically start a counter like this, that is all. Then I uh, specify the input, the oscilloscope is vertically scalable, you can connect n number of inputs to it and again you have this uh, tag and again you have the connector that is connected to the oscilloscope and again you just start it just like that, you see how this works. You have screwed everywhere, sorry. I'll show it in one second. Second, second, second. Give me a second. Okay, I will just show you multi vibrator with the oscilloscope, I will see if that one works, you know, waste time on this. Okay, we have a few uh, analog uh, things like I said, okay, at least this one should work, what is not defined. Okay, everything is screwed up, okay, sorry, <laughs> sorry for this, just go check the docs, it should be fine in that oscilloscope, I will just figure out wha what went wrong over here. Uh, so, uh, this is our one, okay, this is really screwed up, wait a second. Oh, the size of the screen is less, right? Okay, uh, wait a second, wait a second, this should work fine now. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. This is how an ASCII oscilloscope works. <laughs> Sorry, the size of the screen is uh, kind of even smaller uh, compared to my notebook. So, it's kind of, uh, okay, this should work here fine also. I'll explain the JK flip flop once. Uh, set it to 80. Oh. Wait a second, okay, we have some other, uh, uh, three analog uh, modules are there in BinPi. One is an analog buffer, analog converter and analog signal generator. Like I said in the end, I will just show an, uh, two, use two signal generators to uh, generate amplitude modulated wave. Okay, before that we will just check if this one is done. Yeah, done. Okay, this is how the uh, simulation works. Is it clear over there? Okay, so for every negative clock pulse, see J is 0, K is 0 you get the output, no change in the output for a negative edge of the clock. Again, when J is 1, K is 0, you get the setting uh, effect. So, it sets the output to 1 and out bar is set to 0. Again, when J is, should show J 0, okay, this size is reduced again. If I have J 1 and K 1, it toggles the output. That's basically about simulating an JK flip-flop and you have this multi-vibrator. 
we have three modes of the multi vibrator the three modes of the multi vibrator are uh, mono stable you know about that right mono stable a stable and uh, bi stable mode you can operate the multi vibrator module in either of that multi vibrator clock buffers and uh, signal generator all, all of these are concurrent devices i mean like they run as a multi threaded uh, way and again i have this uh, analog buffer okay basically you can attenuate a block you can run it concurrently is basic stuff again i'll show you about analog converters analog converters have a uh, few modes uh, in both a to d and d to a where in a to d you have the successor approximation technique of conversion right you can uh, go through the source you can see that it's uh, done using successor approximation technique and we have two other modes interesting modes i triple 754 format i triple 754 format is basically single position or double position based on the number of bits like 32 or 64 based on that you can uh, see how those kind of conversion uh, conversions take place okay and just go through that so basically what i did here was uh, i just converted 3.2 to digital and again converted it back to uh, analog okay so uh, the advantage of this analog to digital and digital to analog block is that it is run concurrently and again uh, this can be used to model digital circuits accurately like i uh, said at the start this is a digital simulation library we are not in analog simulation library so again what is the use of analog here analog can be used to model digital more accurately using delays and stuff like that okay finally i'll just end with uh, analog signal generator okay we have a signal generator module this one is for the uh, matplotlib plotting of this signal okay this is pretty much simple just i'm creating two signal generators uh, signal generators one for message m of t and c of t for the carrier i'm just using a very low frequency of 100 hertz and 10 hertz and i'm just using the uh, modulation input as the uh, m of t you have seen a lab uh, signal generator right it works pretty much the same way so you set the modulation type to one which is am fm is not fully constructed as of now so uh, you could uh, get fm later on now i just do this okay this kind of uh, you know there are some glitches like i told you but otherwise it should uh, come something when you run it in a console it would be much more cleaner this is an amplitude modulated signal of uh, 10 hertz over a carrier of 100 hertz that's basically about it and we have three uh, expression or boolean uh, logic uh, modules over here one is for a truth table generation i thought i could show the k map we uh, were not able to complete it before pycon okay so uh, we have an application of coin mccleskey method coin mccleskey is a great logic minimization method uh taught to most uh, i mean students after came up when you uh, learn about came up you eventually learn about coin mccleskey method too so uh check this out you have a make boolean function okay you can just check out from that uh, github repo right then again you have this truth table generation thing okay truth table generation thing where you can uh, generate the truth table of an expression you can do this uh you can parse the expression and again you can do some uh, uh you know convert it to uh, the gate form you can evaluate or you know uh, you can do that to convert this to a binpy construct again we have and one more thing uh, called which is an expression convert module which basically handles conversions of the type of if you want say a uh, nand only logic or nor only logic you can do that you can say check this out should be you have a nor only logic like that these are pretty much uh, what binpy can do so that's it any questions yeah excuse me mike Yeah, about these uh, circuits you created. If you yeah. simulated some, uh, can you generate a VHDL file so that it can be run on yeah, an FPGA uh, or something? Yeah, uh, like I told, we are inspired heavily by MyHDL and PyEDA. MyHDL is a great library which kind of uh, uses VHDL, uh, you know, kind of structure which has class decorators and stuff like that. We could eventually the work is in progress. We could eventually integrate MyHDL into BinPy and use that. MyHDL does that pretty well. So you can then in the future you can maybe run yeah. these codes on an yeah. FPGA. Yeah, we can do that. we can just integrate myhdl module if we do that we can uh, very well integrate it with the pga or any other we can print out the hdl netlist and stuff so like once that. it gets integrated can you go for back compatibility like if there sure, are some definitely. codes run on, running on sure. hdl are very long yeah, you can just you can do that those codes you can do that very well python code it'll be a uh, 
two way conversion from Verilog or two Verilog. Okay. You can do that. Thanks. Any other questions? I think. Yeah? Yeah, we can do that. That's why the connector module is there. And if you want to automatically connect without any kind of triggering, if you have a feedback loop, you can use the linker module, which handles any kind of feedback. It doesn't care about feedback. This handles it, it propagates all the changes. No, right now that functionality is not built in. We are trying to build it. <laughs> so, any other questions? Okay, so our, uh, our repository is hosted at GitHub, GitHub slash binpy slash binpy with BNP capitals. Feel free to contribute if you like. I mean, like any feature would be great. We're just a few months old, so we have uh, not many features uh, in binpy. So you could just contribute it, and make it a better library. Thanks. Excuse me, there are a few announcements. We have got this ID. It belongs to Jayant Pauja. And if you are here, you can collect it from uh, this front row. Or uh, if you are a friend of him, can uh, you could inform him. And we have open spaces going on in Audi 3. If you are interested, you can go and attend it. We will be having next session, session in 10 minutes, I guess. So. Hello? Yeah, I think it's working.
नेक्स्ट टॉक विल बी गिवन बाय आदित्य ऑन बिल्डिंग हाई स्केलेबल वेब सर्विसेज विद गिवेंट एंड ही इज अ सॉफ्टवेयर डेवलपर एट प्लीवो ही वर्क्स ऑन स्केलिंग एंड इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर मैनेजमेंट सो सर प्लीज